It's another Underglow video today, and this time it's going to be on another plaid. Yes, a plaid. We've done one before on a Model X plaid. Check out that video in the description below. But today we are doing one on a Model S plaid. Are you ready? Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to remove is the entire frunk tub. It's basically all plastic surrounding it. You're going to want to pop those out carefully don't break any clips once all those pieces are popped out then you can remove the front carpeting and then underneath that there's four bolts remove those four bolts and then the whole front part just comes on out now the front bumper tray needs to come off and this is because we didn't exactly know where to drill the wires to have them go up and through we didn't want to drill into the radiator or have it hit any radiator fans or anything like that so just to be safe and you should always do this with other cars as well if you want to be extra safe is we remove this part now you're gonna to have to move the shield the skid plate kind of that's right in front of the battery and then you're gonna be able to remove this it's just bolts being held in and then it's kind of just wedged into place so remove all the bolts then you can remove this part also when you're removing the front bumper under tray area uh, there's three metal pieces long metal pieces that are being held in by the bolts you remove and if you're not careful or even if you are careful they're probably gonna fall on the ground now it's not a big deal but very loud so just be aware of that so this is what it looks like underneath with both panels removed you can also see the wheel well dangling you're gonna have to remove the wheel well there's like a bolt on it that you have to unscrew because the lower panel is connected to the wheel well once that's out remove the clips in the wheel well that way you can get access to them this underglow is going to be triggered every time the fog lights come on so it comes on automatically and turns off automatically we have to unplug the fog lights so that we could tap into the wire for this all of these screws is for underneath here the skid plate for both skid plates the front and back those are the screws there the wheel lining has come off here all of these screws are for the wheel lining as well as these screws now this one screw right here is for this little flap in this door it's an access point that goes straight into this wheel lining right here and to remove, this is what the under tray is going to look like with the underglow on. We got underneath the car and we kind of measured out where everything should go and this is where it should go. The underglow is pretty straight, it's drilled in with three holes, two on each side and then one right in the middle. When we put the tray back in, the wires are going to go super far to each side so it won't hit the radiator. We put the wires in the holes, made sure the holes were as small as possible while still being able to fit the wires through and then clean underneath it. After that, take off that of backing and slap it down. Make sure you use your hands to rub over it to give that really solid bonding between the adhesive and the plastic under tray. Remember a second ago when I said that the underglow will be triggered by the fog lights? Well, it's also going to be triggered by the turn signals, so it's going to flash with turn signals. How cool is that? We're going to have to tap into this wire with a little T-clip. That's what the little plastic piece was. You don't need to cut anything. This is fully reversible. All you need to do is tear off a little bit of insulation around the wire, the black insulation, the big part. Leave the small green insulation around it. From there, you're just going to clip it on and then you're going to clip to the other side a wire that goes to one of the underglow trigger sources. Before you put the underglow, make sure you clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Typically anything 70% and above will do great. Make sure it's dry before sticking the underglow on. Make sure you line it up properly properly how you want it that's what we did on the sides we lined it up to where we were comfortable and then you just stick it on you can use your hand with a glove it makes it easier to glide across the underglow the rubber part and you're gonna want to push it up against the we did the battery pack and that's just because it's relatively more straight and we just pushed it against the battery pack if you look closely, you can see all of the wires for our trigger sources underneath the car and in the front Anon is doing some wiring Okay, that clicked, that's good. Okay, so the front's on, and the sides are on. Wait, did you do the, did you program the signals? Turn signal, shoot the actor from this one, hit it. They're quite persistent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now hit the turn signal. So they're- Nothing, no, no, nothing's being triggered. Busy. Nothing at all? No, because you can, t you can even yeah. tell here which one's being triggered currently. Okay, right, here it is, the moment of truth. And? Nothing. That's unfortunate. So this white wire going from the turn signal to our Blue Ghost controller and I don't know what color it is, so. 
Okay, so black should be right. Are you sure? Red on that side, black no, on this side. No, no, the, the black from the output here. Yeah, black on the that side. That black output is the right turn signal. Should be. Should be. If we're wrong, we just... Okay, we figured out why it wasn't working, and it was all Anon's fault. So he didn't connect it properly. Well, he connected it, but he didn't crimp it hard enough, so there wasn't metal-on-metal metal contact, so there was no signal going through. Or it was super weak, and it wasn't triggering anything. You can make different animations. Bounce. Okay, so... It's me. So you can see the white wire that's coming from the turn signal going to our blue ghost controller that controls the whole turn signal and everything. It's tapped to the side repeater camera turn signals. And then that black wire is from the underglow that's on the battery pack on the side. And we have to connect that to the front part. And this is going to be your right side. So we have the green wire going from the turn signal, the hot wire, all the way to our ghost controller, which is going to sit in the middle. Make sure you tie these wires up. You don't want them just dangling in the strut. You see that black plastic part up top? That and the body panels we zip tied these wires to. And Anon and Tony, our other guy, are down there just putting the lower panel back bolting it to the body. So the underglow on the sides are coming up through this little side panel right here. Super smart. And we just have some tape over it just to protect it, but it's just coming up through here, the little access panel. And that gets us entry into this wheel well, and it's going up in through here. It's going out through the back up through here, along the frame, and then it's connecting with this wire, which is going from the turn signals. And then that is going to the control box. And that's the same on the other side as well. We have all this mess right here, but we're gonna clean it up in a second. Okay, so the frunk is being cleaned up right now. All the wires are just gonna go to the sides. And then our Blue Ghost controller, can you see it? It's under here. Super tux. Great idea by Anon. You can't even see it. See what? All right, so this side is on. Our backs are connected as well. Uh, we're just going to remove the wheel lining here, and then we're going to put it underneath, go to the back. But man, this looks awesome on a Model S. And it's not just a Model S. It's a Model S plaid. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay, so you saw how we did the front glow. We ran these sides back here, and they actually tuck underneath here. So if you look at our wire, it goes here and then underneath this plastic piece. For Model S and X, this works really well. Uh, you do have a little bit of extra cable because the body is a bit longer than Model 3s and Ys, and this kit's kind of made for Model 3s and Ys. So once you go through there, you'll again get access into the wheel well, and then you can wire it and use zip ties along the inside of this wheel well. Dude, Anon with the cable management. And like, Tony. And Tony with the cable management. We need those jacks and the ramps in the back. So what we're going to do is put the front back together. So put all the plastic pieces, the front tub, the carpet, the four bolts, everything back in, lower the car, and then move everything from the front to the back. Hey guys, we're doing a Model S install with jacks, not from Timu, using ramps. Ready, slowly, one, two, three. Stop. Stop. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, that was just pure luck. All right. That's a little... Ooh, that was spooky. <laughs> it was like rocking. Okay. Well, we did it. So we jacked up the two back wheels, put them on jacks for safety, or put them on ramps for safety. We're going to be taking our underglow, and it's going to be going from about right there to about right there. So we're going to remove this back axis panel to see how much kind of room no, no, no. we have back it, here. It, 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 twist it. Yeah. Boom. All right, so twist it a little bit, and then that should just pop right off. Uh, so these bolts right here are not even in. It's crazy. I'll put the pictures up on the screen, but you can see that the bolt is like to the side, and it's not even coming out here. We're going to remove this to see what's up and to get a better look at our underflow. This is sick. So that's the motor. The two scary orange handles are your high voltage, which you definitely don't want to touch. That's why it's so big, because there's two motors back here. This thing is wild, dude. Got all the suspension okay. for the wheels. Enough play. So that plate's removed, just hanging out in the sun over there. And now we gotta get this plate off as well. So it's mostly 10 mil, so just be aware of that. This is the wheel. These are the two arms right here. This is the underglow. It's going in here. And 
So the water is coming up through here. I think that looks fine. Oh wait, wait, wait. There is a there is a mounting point right there. If I move this, I don't want it to dangle. That's the big issue right there. This is coming through here. I think this needs to go yeah. behind here. Well. Clip in. This will do. And for purple, so it looks this like this wire is gonna go under here. So the wiring, uh huh, it's coming out from the bottom, right there. Mm -hmm. You see that wire? Okay, so it's going up the back. Mm -hmm. It's tied kind of to those. And it stays super flush against there and it comes out through there. It's this black wire right here. But look, it's all back here too. It fits perfectly in here. It's like a huge cavity back there. As long as it's away from the wheels. And then, yeah. And the suspension. And it's all zip tied back there. So, so yeah. This one goes up and down, so are, are we clear on that? Well, they're all with these. Okay. Though, maybe I should zip tie this. Yeah. This one needs to go up here. You see what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Okay. For the clips. Okay, so the ground wires are coming out through this hole, and that's from the bottom down here. Remember, the chassis of cars are all metal, at least the modern ones. So we're going to take these ground wires, ground them to here. Super smart. So this grommet right here is where the wires went through. So that grommet goes right there, where it's supposed to. We're going to cut a hole through it so that the wires, ground wires, can come through. All right, so this is a cool angle. We finished the underglow. It's properly grounded to this bolt right here. The only thing that smells like shooting cream? Yeah, Loki, I was about to say. What color was it originally? 